Monseigneur? That other world where you were held prisoner. Do you still feel its effects? This other world, as you call it, Igis, is none other than hell itself. Gehenna. The place the Lord sends those who worship the beast. But hell didn't keep me. Has God given me a chance to redeem myself, perhaps? What task did you entrust to the abbot? The Holy Office ordered me to keep an eye on the Comte de Cagliostro. This charlatan imagines himself to be the heir of Mesmer, the magnetizer, and seems to have ingratiated himself with the king. There have been disturbing reports about him that could lead to his excommunication. It is said that he can make the dead speak. Can you imagine? I asked the abbot to investigate the surroundings of Eugène de Vaucanson's workshop, where the Count had been seen coming and going for several weeks. I cannot disclose the details of what he discovered there, but it may well be related to the events that have plunged Paris into mourning. I bid you farewell, Monseigneur. Wait just a moment, s'il vous plaît. You are one of Cagliostro's creatures, are you not? What do you mean? When were you... When did you... awaken? I do not understand, Monseigneur. Well, well, that is to say, you talk, you think, you seem to act with some sort of free will. This was not always the case, that much is clear. You must agree that not all automates are as sophisticated as yourself. I'm attempting to unravel the mystery of your true nature. Tell me, what are your very first memories? That is a question I am unable to answer. How strange. In that case, you must surely be able to tell me who taught you what you know. What I know, Monseigneur? Hmm. How can I put it in a way that you'll understand? For example, you call me Monseigneur. How do you know that this is how one addresses a member of the clergy of my rank? I cannot explain it. I believe... Go on, Aegis. I believe that this knowledge is not mine. Well, I never. Did you hear that, Abbot? I caught every word, mon ami. Mon père. Plus tard, s'il vous plaît. I need a moment alone. I must read over my notes in light of what we have just discovered. Monsieur Raymond, what is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position to improve the lot of our unfortunate brethren. Our numbers grow by the day, and we have many illustrious members, such as the Comte de Mirabeau and the Marquis de Lafayette. But it was Monsieur Brissot and the abbot that founded the group. Oh, good old Brissot. Shouldn't he be here by now? Yes, mon père. He should have arrived hours ago. Alas, there has been no sign of him. I hope to God that no misfortune has befallen him. What fate does the kingdom reserve for those with black skin? According to tradition, any enslaved person who sets foot on French soil is freed. This rule is most problematic in the eyes of planters in the colonies who would seek to maintain their precious labor force. This is why, for the past 12 years, no black people have been allowed to disembark in any of the kingdom's ports. Those who accompany their masters on the journey are imprisoned in the Admiralty's jails the moment they leave the ship. As for those who manage to evade the authorities, they live in fear of the raids carried out by the Marshal Sea. Are you not subject to these laws, Monsieur Raymond? I am fortunate enough to have been born a subject of the king through my father, and also to have received an education, and to be wealthy. Naturally, that makes all the difference. You are quite a long way from home, Monsieur Raymond. I haven't been back to Saint-Domingue in nearly five years. I left my most trusted men in charge of overseeing my indigo plantation. I came to France with the aim of having an audience with the king. I hoped to convince him to use his automats for agricultural work. 
I was of the belief that this was the best way to ease the suffering of our enslaved brethren. Alas, it was all for naught. I was only able to get an audience with the Minister of the Navy, and even that was granted reluctantly. Later, when the King convened the Estates General, my hopes were renewed. I saw it as an opportunity to make our voices heard. And then, mon dieu, what a disaster, Aegis. What a complete disaster. Monseigneur?
is built on a hill in the area. little woman. I've always been loyal to the king. Oh, yes, as God is my witness. I'll, I'll do anything you ask. I have no intention of harming you. The royal automats are my only enemies. Partout les saints, you were sent by heaven above. Have you watched these machines? Yes. I had a front row seat. A swarm of ferocious beasts who cleared the way for a creature right up a nightmare. It was the Grim Reaper, madame. Death itself. Nothing and no one was spared. I was spellbound and horrified by its dance of death. If by misfortune you find yourself in its presence, do not let it leap in your direction. Those who suffered its lightning attack did not survive. None of them, without exception. Come now, if you claim to want to destroy these automats, it's time to get going. You must stop them from advancing.
So, I put it to you that the fact that the society is in need of re... Uh. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, uh. The demon can speak? Speak, then! Has my time come? I do not know. My life is in your hands. It's not worth much. Do what you will with it. I seek Monsieur de Volcanson. He holds the secret to the tireless automats. And you think you'll find him here? In my quarters? Tell me, who is your master? Aren't you one of Caliostro's creatures? I serve only the Queen. Ah, the Queen. Well then, that's something else altogether. I found this message in Monsieur de Volcanson's carriage. He didn't receive it. That is most worrying. Eugène and I are old friends. I was hoping he would be able to tell me what the deuce is going on. Of course, I doubt he had a hand in this odious display of force, but he spent years in service to the King and his projects. Projects whose macabre ends we're only now discovering. Where could Monsieur de Volcanson have gone? How should I know? The situation is dire out there. Everyone is taking shelter wherever they can. Let me think. I know that he and Monsieur Bailly, the astronomer, are close. Perhaps Monsieur Bailly knows more? Where can he be found? He must have taken refuge in his observatory at the Louvre. Otherwise, I doubt he is still alive. He and his associate Lavoisier, the astronomer and the chemist, they were once the pride of the court, but have fallen out of favor. Too close to the common people, it would seem. It's as if only Volcanson managed to stay in the king's good graces. Sic transit gloria mundi. Who is this Cagliostro? <laughs> you feign ignorance. I do not know. Then you should know that Cagliostro is the king's right-hand man. He claims to be a magician, and he is a self-styled count. A charlatan who is more powerful than a minister. Precisely. I've heard the most troubling rumors about him. He's supposedly the one who enabled the king to breathe life into these killing machines that no key need wind. I admit it sounds highly improbable, and I wouldn't believe a word of it if I didn't have proof standing right before my eyes. Now that I think about it, as you can see, my servants have all abandoned me and I will soon follow their lead. Those poor people hoped to escape the city while there was still time. A dire vrai, I fear I shall never see them alive again. Before she left, the housekeeper gave me this key. It opens the gate that leads to the Louvre, if you are foolhardy enough to attempt it. I found a note written by Eugène de Vaucanson. He mentions the death of the Dauphin at Medon. What happened that night? How should I know? The child passed away at Meudon. I was in Versailles. Eugène de Vaucanson told you nothing. The only thing he was willing to tell me was that something terrible had happened, and that the circumstances leading to the Dauphin's death were not exactly as described. One thing for certain is that he was extremely upset about what happened. So much so that he refused to spend a single day more in the king's service. But he has apparently changed his mind. Besides the king and Monsieur de Vaucanson, who else witnessed these events? Well, if they followed protocol, Monsieur Le Monnier, the first physician to the king, he must have performed the autopsy on the child. Where can I find him? He lives in Versailles, near the chateau. But he has a practice here in Paris, on Rue Saint-Thomas d'Enfer, in the Quartier Saint-André-des-Arts. 